In the event of an engine failure, Smart Glide allows you to quickly locate and plot a direct course to a suitable airport within gliding range. Smart Glide provides helpful automation to help reduce your workload and increase your situational awareness. Please be aware that Smart Glide capabilities require specific equipment and configuration. In an experimental aircraft, Smart Glide requires a G3X Touch flight display. In a certified aircraft, Smart Glide requires a GTN XI navigator plus a flight display, such as a TXI 500 or 600, or GI 275. Visit Garmin.com and search for Smart Glide compatibility for current compatibility information. While Smart Glide is always monitoring nearby airports, activating this feature automatically activates a direct to course to the most suitable airport estimated to be within best gliding range. This is dependent on several factors, like runway length and condition, type of airport, proximity, available weather, and terrain and obstacles. Smart Glide can be activated from a dedicated Smart Glide switch, if installed. If the button is not installed, simply hold the Direct 2 button for two seconds. Another method is to select the Emergency button on the home page, located on the GTN or TXI display, followed by activating Smart Glide. Upon activation, Smart Glide calculates the glide route to a suitable destination airport. When activated, a yellow highlighted area indicates your available glide distance in all directions, taking into consideration the dynamically calculated glide performance, as well as terrain and obstacles. With a suitable airport within glide range, the existing flight plan is replaced with a direct course to the diversion airport. If more than one suitable airport is in glide range, a list of alternate airports is available from which you can choose. Smart Glide will select airport options at best glide based on certain criteria. Private airports may be selected if no public or military airport is found within gliding range. The estimated AGL altitude upon arriving at the airport is also examined. If equipped with a GTX 345 or 345R transponder or GNX 375 acting as a transponder, or a GSR-56 or GDL-69 or 69A or 88 with activated weather subscription, the weather conditions such as VFR, marginal VFR, IFR, and low IFR are considered. It will also give headwind and crosswind data for the longest runway at the destination airport. For weather to be a consideration, the aircraft must have data link weather available as well as the destination having weather reporting capabilities or be within five nautical miles of another airport that has weather reporting capabilities. Finally, runway length is considered. The lowest acceptable runway length value for your aircraft and acceptable surface types must be designated during installation. These may differ from the default values. Remember that as PIC, you are the ultimate authority on what airport or location you should glide to. While the system acts as a tool to give you situational awareness, you must consider all factors in your decision making. You can choose whatever airport or landing spot is best for you in any given scenario and ultimately deviate from the system's primary selection. Detailed information can be shown on the emergency page. Active mode information and overlays will always appear on the PFD and or MFD of your display. Smart Glide status will show in an information window even when not on the emergency page. Once the direct course to the diversion airport has been selected, you'll see the estimated arrival AGL altitude over the selected diversion airport. The system will place the tower or CTAF frequency in the COM standby field. The transponder code of 7700 will be just one button push away. You'll also notice distance bearing information to the airport, as well as runway extensions. While Smart Glide is active, runway information for the longest runway is available. Map features automatically declutter and topo or terrain overlays turn on, if not already active. 
All of this allows you to focus on the task at hand, which is piloting the aircraft to a safe landing location. Equipped with a GFC 500 or GFC 600 autopilot, SmartGlide will automatically engage the autopilot, activate the flight director, and set the IAS mode to the configured best glide speed. The wings will level in roll mode until the Smart Glide route is calculated, at which point the lateral mode will change to GPS. The autopilot will not engage if within two nautical miles or closer to your landing airfield. Although, if servos are already engaged, they will remain engaged until the pilot disconnects the autopilot if within two nautical miles. When you're four miles from the airport, an advisory alert notifies you. The system will direct you towards the center of the airfield. Within two miles, you'll see a warning alert, at which point you should disconnect the autopilot to maneuver to land. If the selected airport is unreachable, you'll see a caution alert advising you that the airport is out of range. Smart Glide does not manage altitude. In order to make a safe landing, you may need to add drag and or maneuver the aircraft off route before reaching the airfield. On some systems, if excess altitude exists at the time the aircraft reaches the field, the autopilot will initiate a series of standard rate turns to descend until the pilot disconnects the autopilot. Be sure to reference your pilot's guide to understand your aircraft's configuration. If no suitable airport is within glide range, the system will send both an aural and visual alert while continuing to scan for an available airfield. The Smart Glide range ring will still appear on the display. The COM standby frequency will change to 121.5 and the 7700 transponder code can be directly selected. The autopilot will engage with the best glide speed bugged and roll mode activated to keep the wings level. You'll also see an airport out of range caution alert appear. Altitude callouts are then provided for 2,000, 1,000, and 500 feet AGL as you near the surface. It's important to remember that while Smart Glide is a fantastic tool, the pilot in command is the final authority with respect to the safety of the flight. Therefore, it's the pilot in command's responsibility to decide whether Smart Glide should be used in a given emergency or to deactivate Smart Glide at any given time. Certain limitations do exist. Smart Glide is unavailable when on the ground and below 1,000 feet AGL after takeoff. Descending below 200 feet AGL after reaching 1,000 feet AGL. Flying at altitudes above 36,000 feet. When a cross-fill error occurs and the cross-side navigator is GTN-XI, the system is first initializing, and one of the following is lost. GPS, ADC, or AHARS. See your pilot's guide for additional information. Smart Glide is not an autonomous landing system. It indicates the latest appropriate time for the pilot to take control of the aircraft by using visual and aural maneuver and land alerts. It's the pilot's responsibility to disengage the autopilot and safely fly the approach and landing.